The use of DNA profiling in criminal investigations can bring benefits to society by helping solve crimes, exonerate the innocent, and assisting in the enforcement of the rule of law. But DNA is not simply a fingerprint. It is a window into each individual's medical history and that of their entire family. The taking and retention of biological samples raises very real concerns about the proper balance between the legitimate needs of law enforcement and human rights. Our DNA contains markers for predisposition to alcoholism, mental illness, a whole host of very personal issues that we wouldn't want to share with anyone. Uh, we're now being forced to give our DNA to the government. And in the last 15 years, DNA collection by law enforcement has moved from a method of developing supplemental evidence against violent felony offenders to routine use for a multiplicity of purposes that pose significant privacy and civil rights concerns to every citizen. DNA databases have been vastly expanded as a result of DNA collection practices, including collecting DNA from individuals convicted of petty crimes, collecting DNA from innocent individuals arrested but not convicted of crimes, trolling for suspects using DNA dragnets. The result is that the U.S. now maintains the largest database in the world with 9 million records as of 2011. Furthermore, a number of new genetic techniques and practices are providing law enforcement unprecedented access into the private lives of innocent persons by way of their own genetic data without a court order or individualized suspicion, including comparing a crime scene sample to scores of DNA samples taken from people who are demonstrably innocent of the crime, so-called familial searching using scientifically questionable practices to constructing physical profiles of a perpetrator from DNA, surreptitiously collecting and searching DNA left behind on items such as cigarette butts and coffee cups, the creation of local offline forensic DNA databases with no oversight, dismissal of petty arrests in return for voluntarily joining a DNA database. The truth is that bigger isn't better when it comes to forensic DNA databases. The power of DNA databases is diluted when innocent individuals and marginal criminals are added. DNA database expansion in this fashion has not resulted in a statistical increase in crimes solved using DNA. Even worse, cases of mistaken DNA evidence are piling up across the country as a result of false matches and lab error an extraordinarily precise forensic tool, there's no question. But what's missing from the analysis is the way human fallibility, human nature enter, enters into every aspect of the collection, the handling, the interpretation and analysis of forensic DNA. The consequences are real, especially for racial minorities. African Americans now account for an estimated 40% of the federal DNA database while only constituting 13% of the population. A person knowing he's innocent does give that DNA sample and the police test it and find out he was not the perpetrator. What happens to that sample? Does it go into a criminal database? Does it uh, come back to haunt that person in future years? Expansion in the use of DNA by law enforcement is rapidly shifting from identification to surveillance. We need a rigorous debate about ethical guidelines. The time to begin is now.